Dear friends, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today we gather for the crowning of Mary. It is an ancient, uh, old tradition in our church where we just remember in the month of May that we're called not just to dedicate this month, but our lives to her. Jesus entrusted Mary to us from the cross so that she might be our mother and lead us and as she is the perfect example for us. Brothers and sisters, as we come then for this great celebration, and as we are reminded again to let Mary be the queen of our hearts, let us call to mind all the many blessings that the Lord has given us as we pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of Jesus, your Son. We give you thanks and praise for the gift of the Immaculate Conception, Mary, our Mother, and the Mother of your Son. We pray that we might be given the grace to follow her example always, and to say yes to you and to Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Please listen as we hear the words uh, from St. Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Blessed are you who believed that was what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. What a beautiful exclamation from Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, that in kind of teaching us and proclaiming to us that yes, Mary was that always and ever faithful disciple, the one who always believed in the Lord's promises. And she comes to us as an example to lead us, to guide us. In times that might be a little dark, in times that are frustrating, Mary is a light bringing us ever an ever closer union with Jesus. I remember as a child growing up in my home parish and we did the May crownings every May and it was such an awesome celebration to come together to pray and this year looks a lot different. I remember um, in my last few years here, it's our first communion, first communicants who came forward and still dressed in their dresses and looking so pretty that would bring the crown up for Mary. Um, so I asked Father Harrison to dress in a First Communion dress just as so he could look all pretty and he wouldn't do it. Um, so um, he'll still do the crowning, though. He, he agreed to do that. But it's a reminder for us that um, in this time of separation, in this time of longing, that we can still pray together. And we can still keep on some of our traditions. And even though we haven't had our First Communion yet or Confirmation yet, um, that we can still continue with some of our traditions I invite um, you, if you have your Mary statue at home, and perhaps you made a little crown for her out of flowers or what, however you made it, maybe paper and you drew one, um, it's a time to get that prepared now. Because as we go into this time, as Father Harrison, we, we sing the Hail Mary and Father Harrison crowns the Blessed Mother, I ask you to crown Mary in your home or in your yard and also to let her be crowned in your heart. Ask her as we do that, and we pray the Hail Mary, that she might always guide you to closer to Jesus and be that awesome example for each of us.
The Lord be with you. And with his spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.